um, in yeshiva, they have this thing called mishmar. And I don't, I don't know if they do that in America, right? Because there's no, there's nothing to do here. But in Jerusalem, they try to keep the kids inside the yeshiva because they don't want them, you know, getting beat up by the Russians. Because they're the only ones who cause violence in Israel. There's a reason Crack Square is called Crack Square, right? Because that's the Russians, you know, come like one in the morning. That when they stumble out of the pubs, they just start beating everybody up and they start cracking heads. I mean, well, they usually have some sort of meatless chillant and some guy playing the guitar. And I don't know, the Rosh Hashiva will give you a speech just before Shabbos so you don't... Uh, misrepresent the yeshiva when you're eating in someone else's house so yeah consider this mishmar you guys could be anywhere truth be told it's still early i guess if you guys wanted to hit the club at 11 you i mean you still could but let's see and it's moroccan who starts fighting with russians come on the moroccans they may start yelling i mean they're not actual fighters okay a jewish club i always wondered why this didn't exist like a tavern for religious people right i mean you walk in and there's the Rosh Shlomo Zaman Orbach on this wall, Rosh Shalom Eliashev, Ravad Yosef, and you're like, I'll take a gin and tonic. All right, why not? Why can't that exist? Why does being religious by definition means being a dork and being, you know, and having a hundred kids? All right, make it fun. Make it, make it. Now, truth be told, in Jerusalem, everybody on Thursday night, like if you go to Mike's place and all the bars, I mean, surrounding in Dublin Bar, I don't know about Dublin Bar, I don't know if that place is kosher. But it's full of religious people, you know, so in Israel, people are a little more laid back. I don't think in America, I mean, you're going to find someone in the Jewish community drinking at a bar. But in Jerusalem, it's like hip, you know, you go out for a drink, this and that. Uh, maybe New York is different because uh, there are some restaurants that have a bar in it, like kosher restaurants. But yeah, no, religious Jews, religious people have to be a little more laid back, right? So make the religion a lot more attractive. Being a... A fanatical religious person didn't exist in the Torah. It was part of your culture, right? You buy into this philosophy and then, yeah, I believe in God. I'm going to keep his law, right? But I have to listen to Jewish music too. A, I never agreed to that. I think Jewish music sucks. Okay. Talking about a feisty Russian. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming in to make noise so more people join. All right. I once asked the police officer, because Jews aren't violent people, okay? I'm not saying there aren't Jews in jail, but they're typically not in jail for violence. American However, Jews, you mean? Uh, even Israeli Jews, you know. No. But I asked the police officer in Israel, what's the most, uh, like, of the calls you get? And they're like, oh, it's easy. It's Russians, like, beating up their wives. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. I mean, they are the violent, and there's actually, the Jewish mafia is is the Russian mafia. I, like, most people don't know yeah, that. That's what, uh, even in Russia. Yeah, yeah. It's like, been like this forever. That. In Israel, you see it also. I mean, you see them there also with like the leather jackets in the BMW and waiting for the guy coming out of like Macha. The organized the... crime in, in the Russian Empire back in the days, it was all Jews. Yeah, most people think that this is like, like on the level of blood libels. Guys, first we have to tell the truth, then we give our opinion. On this show, like if you want to make fun of Jewish people, go ahead. That doesn't speak against Torah. Yeah, I mean, we're not a respecter of men here. And of course, we're not talking about religious Jews. There aren't religious Jews in the Russian mafia. I mean, who do you think was like a whole bunch of uh, the, the gangster during Prohibition were the Jews who left after the revolution in Russia, moved to America, and they were the gangsters in America, and they were all the gangsters in Russia before they moved to America. I mean, Meyer Lansky was Jewish too. But... Yeah, but I'm talking about like, you know, Odessa in Ukraine. The, it was like the the capital of the Jewish mafia. The it's it's like you know famous historical stuff. I mean, they, were, they didn't do the like they weren't like the road uh, gangsters. They were like mafia gangsters, you know. Yeah, because Odessa was the the center of uh, commerce, right? All the imported stuff came in through the seaport, so it's perfect place to run your run the business the problem is most people don't know many jews at least in the west so they think every time you say jewish they think you're talking about a hasidic jew and they think that every every jew is religious right but it's not true i mean there's what to say with with the problems that jewish people have caused on this planet we have to make a distinction between religious jews and non-religious jews and even the religious jews aren't the sweetest people in the world but we're not here defending jews we're here promoting torah so with all the problems we have it's still better to be jewish than not so there you go. 
You get access to mafia also. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't think there's a Sparty mafia. I mean, they wouldn't get along. They'd be arguing too much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be telling everybody what they do. All right. You know, speaking on topics they know nothing about. They, they like to brag, so they'll they'll be telling everybody everything. We are colorful people. What?